Hi, this is Kendra from Pencil and Pigment, and today I thought we would do something just a touch different. I thought we would look at a book that's a little bit older. Not by much, but a little bit. Um, there are a couple YouTube channels that do a fantastic job of going over and doing flip-throughs of brand new books, and um, my our library kind of struggles to keep up with that, so I thought I would look at some older ones because I think some older books have value still. Some are timeless. Some can give us great inspiration. So I thought we'd look at this one. This is called Dynamic Color Painting for the Beginner. And this is by Diane Edison. And this was published in 2008. So it's not that much older. But I thought we would take a look at this. Um, this has some really interesting ideas about looking at so, sort of famous historic paintings um, this is by Surratt, and looking at these for motivation, I love looking at books that highlight famous pieces. You can see color composition, the red and the green complement each other. You can see um, how things are laid out, placement, form, where your eye is drawn. There's so many different things that you can look at when you look at a famous painting that I think there is a lot of information that can be gleaned from that. And they're looking at design elements, shape, texture. Um, here is space and depth. I will link an article about different elements of design that are worth, look, worth looking at. Here's an interesting composition where this is the main subject matter and everything sort of points to that. Here is a little bit on perspective and understanding that, especially when you're doing um, pieces that have huge depth of field, a foreground, a middle ground, a background. Here's harmony and balance and placement and understanding these very specific principles. So when you go to create your own specific piece and work of art, that you have all these in mind to make the strongest painting possible. Here is a color wheel ideas. So these are sort of the primary colors here. Red, yellow, blue. This one is fabulous. Look at that. Oh, I love it so much. And here is a color wheel and here is all bright colors. This is just great. So this is just getting you used to looking at. So here is value range. And here are um, using black and white. So shades and tints, warm and cool colors. This is just getting you to look at art and seeing everything there is to see. So here's making a paint palette for color mixing. And here's talking about oils versus acrylics, painting mediums, uh, making your own color wheel with some charts and things. And here is color mixing oil and acrylic. Making your own chromatic chart. And instructions on how to do that, which is a great reference that you can make for yourself. Um, general painting supplies and cleaning up for the next day of painting. Cleaning up is just as important as setting up and creating, so you can continue to use your tools. Wow, look at those onions. It's amazing. Wood panel preparation. Stretching canvas. So here is budget saving tips for stretching your own canvas and priming the canvas. Um, stretcher construction. Health and safety tips, I appreciate that very, very much. There can be some dangerous and toxic things involved with art. Using a viewfinder to help for figuring out the best composition. We did that in high school. I still have a little viewfinder. Uh, negative space. All these different things that are important. Shading, using light to shade how powerful that makes a piece. Reflective color. 
It's just looking at everything, prepping your palette, using black and white. Here's a little peephole viewfinder. Any piece of white paper, you can cut a little hole in it, move things around. Practice with your table and rearrange your fruit and things on your table and understand compositions and rules of three and <clears throat> different things like that it can really, really help. Contrast. Here she's showing wet on wet technique. This is a great book. It's older. There's no YouTube video about this one, which is why I wanted to show this one. Um, Caravaggio. These are great. These are very famous pieces. Um, or, here's tips and tricks on arranging your still lifes. If you don't have a subject matter, you can always create a sort of a still life on a table, on a presentation. So here is the arrangement of that. Here's a scumbling technique. It's a glazing technique. Um, instead of adding a wet layer of paint, trace amounts of wet color are spread over the dried paint film, leaving a thin layer of color that changes the appearance of the older paint. So there's a whole tip and trick on how to do that. This is a great book. And the other thing about showing older books is you can find these online for a fraction of the price which if you are on a budget, um, if you're looking to build up a library somewhere, that can be really helpful. How fun are these? Selecting, arranging your still life. Just going into painting the marbles. Marbles are tough. Marbles are tough, but that's, that's a great subject matter to create with. Anything that has reflective glass, it's a good one. These are just some other pieces where the examples are talked about, so they get into landscape here. And here's the steps. You can see the process of it being broken down. Portraiture. And all the different styles and ways to do that. And I love that they highlight all of those. Oh, <laughs> look at these. These are fantastic. And a portrait in progress. What the progress steps actually look like. And it is a layers game with painting. It's layers and layers and layers. And this is sort of the front cover. This book's great. I would check your local library, see if they have it, recommend it to them. Um, in the United States, it is September 18th, 18th. So this is banned book week. So head over to your library, get a banned book. Pick up some art books while you're there. Health and safety. So, self-critique. General health and safety issues for painting and woodshop studios. So, understanding the safety precautions of some of the tools that you use and some of the solvents and things. Here's a glossary and further reading. That's always appreciated. This is a great book. If your library doesn't have this book or it has some other types of books, check out maybe a historical art book and look at how the paintings and the pictures are composed and look at the color balance, look at the value range. Again, I will link the different elements of design, form, line, repetition, you know, shape, things like that, and really analyze what makes a painting look really neat and look amazing and see if there's ways that you can alter your pre-sketches before you work on a final painting that some of that might be very very helpful so i hope you enjoyed this video i hope you have a wonderful day and i will talk to you tomorrow bye